pointer is a variable that stores the address of some other variable. But what is an address, and where are variables stored if other variables can store their addresses? Well, a computer's memory typically consists of 8-bit bytes in one continuous sequence. Portions of this memory are reserved when a program starts to store program code, static or external variables, as well as to contain the stack of function calls, their arguments, local variables, and so on. The storage for each variable must reside in memory, and where it resides is defined by an address. Every variable has an address, even if you don't use it or think about it. This address is just the offset from the base address to the location where the variable storage resides. Now C provides a special category of variables specifically for handling these addresses, sorry, these address variables, and they are called pointers. Pointers or pointer variables also include a type that indicates the type of the variable being pointed to to provide a degree of safety as the compiler can check that you are using the variable being pointed to according to the rules governing that particular type. Sometimes you need to throw away the type of a pointer. There are many reasons you might need to do this, but you should always do this with some caution. Still for those times, C provides a special type called void, which in this context means some storage whose type is not known to the compiler. The base address of zero is also treated specially, not so much by the compiler, but by you and I, in the particular st and, and in particular standard libraries, to mean a null pointer, or a pointer that is not currently pointing to anything. The simplest way to start using pointers is to get the address of some variable. I can define a local variable called apples. This variable is stored on the stack, in memory, and you don't have to think about where or how it's stored or how its storage was provided, but you can get its address using the address of operator. That's the ampersand, which is a unary operator that I've not yet introduced and has nothing to do with a bitwise and operator, which as you know is a binary operator. The address of operator returns the address of some object. In this case, the object that the apple, apples variable refers to. I then use this returned address to initialize the p variable, giving it an initial value. The asterisk, or star, following the type and preceding the pointer variable name indicates that this variable, which is also stored on the stack, is a pointer to int, or a pointer variable storing the address of an integer object. Again, this star has nothing to do with the arithmetic operator. Now, pointer declarations can get complicated. This is really simple, but as you will see later, it doesn't always stay this simple, and I've found that it helps to read such declarations from right to left. Start with the name of the variable, and move back until you reach the beginning of the declaration. When you see the star, just say pointer. So p is a pointer to int, and it's initialized with the address of the apples variable. Now we see another use of the star, and in this case, it is another unary operator that returns the contents of its operand. This is often called the dereference operator, as it dereferences the pointer, returning the variable being pointed to. So here we see an expression, and you can read it as the contents of p plus 6. The result of this expression is then used to initialize the oranges variable, giving it an initial value of 11. Now a key insight to remember when using pointers is that the compiler is usually unable to detect whether pointers are in fact pointing to some valid location. C also does not offer any runtime facility for making these sorts of checks. Consider this scenario. We have already learned that local variables are not initialized, so the value of the p local variable or the address that it initially points to is not predictable. It could be anything. So when subsequently executing this line, uh, what happens? Well, nobody knows, and this is where pointers get ugly, because your program will just go on and treat the contents of the address being pointed to as if it is an integer. Assuming the address is, an addressable, is in an addressable range, your program may continue to run without realizing that its results are quite likely incorrect and in poisoning the rest of your program and the user's information. A much better scenario is if the p variable is initialized to zero. In this case, you can be sure that your program will crash very abruptly. What that means depends on the OS, but you par your program won't simply continue running, causing more harm. Obviously, some defensive programming will go a long way. Given that we all agree that a null pointer is an invalid pointer, 
and null is represented by zero, and zero is treated as false in C, we can simply use an if statement to check whether the pointer points to anything before using it.